Rockets burn enormous volumes of fuel, using the momentum of the resulting high-speed exhaust to push the rocket into orbit. Since a rocket is intended to fly in the vacuum of space, it has to carry both its fuel and its oxygen with it in order to burn the fuel and generate exhaust. How do rockets carry and burn huge amounts of volatile chemicals in a controlled manner without exploding? As it happens, avoiding this tendency for rapid, unplanned disassembly is one of the more challenging bits of rocket science. Let's take a closer look at our rocket diagram from the last video and see what we can do to transform it from a giant explosive flamethrower into something more usable as a rocket. Step one is to separate the fuel and oxygen into their own tanks. Step two is to add a third tank, called a combustion chamber, where the actual burning of fuel will take place. This not only makes the rocket safer, since we can control how much fuel and oxygen are in contact and burning at any given time, it also lets us get the most efficient reaction possible. What does this mean and why is it important? Time for a quick digression into chemistry. As we zoom in on the molecules in our tanks, we observe that each molecule of hydrogen and oxygen actually consists of two atoms of their constituent elements bound together, thus the chemical symbols H2 and O2. Now let's look at the exhaust molecules from our last video, which, as you might recall, are just super hot water. A molecule of water has the formula H2O, which means that it is constructed from one oxygen atom bound to two hydrogen atoms. What does this mean for our combustion reaction? Well, in order to be as efficient as possible, we will need to have exactly twice as many hydrogen molecules as we have oxygen molecules. Thus, for every two H2 molecules and one O2 molecule, we will have four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms which, as a result of combustion, reassemble into two H2O molecules. If our ratio is off at all, we still get combustion, but some of our ingredients will be wasted. Why is it bad to have leftover, unburned molecules? Remember the rocket equation we discussed previously. Any unburned fuel or oxygen is just extra mass we are carrying along in our rocket. Since it doesn't burn, it doesn't release any energy to help accelerate our exhaust and push our rocket forward. If we leave these extra molecules behind, we can carry more useful stuff into orbit. This is why rocket engineers always aim to burn their fuel and oxidizers without any waste. How do separate tanks help us achieve this? Well, with separate storage tanks and a relatively small combustion chamber, we can control the flow of both fuel and oxygen to ensure that the ratio entering the combustion chamber is as close to optimal as possible. Now our rocket is looking pretty good. However, you might notice two subtle problems with our setup. First, because gas molecules bounce around, there's going to be a lot of wasted, empty space between molecules in these tanks. Fortunately, as we add more and more molecules, and the pressure in the tanks rises, the gas will eventually condense into a liquid. This means that we will be able to store a lot of each chemical in a relatively small tank, which is great news. Second, as liquid flows out of each tank into the combustion chamber and is burned, the pressure in the tank will get lower and lower. As the pressure drops, the liquid in the tank will flow more and more slowly until the flow stops altogether. To get around this, rockets typically use a tank pressurization system. This often takes the form of small tanks of helium, a light, inert gas. As the fuel and oxygen are drawn down and burned, the helium flows out into the tank to maintain pressure. This plumbing setup is now pretty close to that of some real, functional rockets. However, this engine design has practical limitations when it comes to the momentum of the exhaust, and therefore, the thrust of the rocket. Remember that momentum is speed times mass. Since we obviously can't alter the mass of water molecules, in order to get more thrust for a rocket, and therefore, put a heavier rocket into orbit, we need the exhaust to have more speed. Getting the exhaust to a higher speed means that it will be hotter, and that these hotter, faster molecules will be bouncing off the walls of the combustion chamber harder, exerting more pressure. Because high exhaust speed means we can push a bigger rocket into orbit, and also requires that we have high chamber pressure, we definitely want the highest chamber pressure we can get, all things being equal. However, as the combustion chamber pressure gets higher, it not only pushes the rocket forward, but starts to push back on the fuel and oxidizer flowing in. If this back pressure gets higher than the pressure in the fuel or oxygen tanks, the reaction stops and a rocket will stall. 
How do we get extremely high combustion chamber pressures without carrying an absurd and inefficient amount of pressurization gas? The solution is turbo pumps. What is a turbo pump? Simply stated, a turbo pump is just a rotary pump used to move liquid from one area to another while raising its pressure. A basic turbo pump consists of a series of propeller blades mounted on a rotating shaft inside of a tube. Liquid is sucked in one end of the pump and pushed out of the other end at a higher pressure. A well-designed turbo pump can push fuel and oxygen into our combustion chamber at extremely high pressures, allowing us to build a rocket with high thrust for a minimal increase in weight. With the addition of tanks, turbo pumps, and a combustion chamber, a rocket can now safely and efficiently carry and burn everything it needs to reach orbit.